Let's, let's talk about what happened last night. So, uh, admittedly, I did not watch the Monday night game, uh, but I did watch the highlights, right? And you read about it. And I don't really care about how the game itself went down as much. Um, but it now looks, as, as, as we sit here on December 1st, how about it? Didn't even realize December 1st. As we sit here on December 1st, these Saints are exactly where you would have loved for them to be back at the beginning of the season. Um, they're currently nine and two, seven and one in the NFC, which is crucial, as we'll see. Whereas the Seahawks and Packers are nipping at their heels at eight and three. Now, I don't know that anybody looks as complete as the New Orleans Saints does in the NFC, like as good as the Packers are. Um, their defense is definitely not as good as the Saints. I also look LaFleur and Rodgers are really good, but I think Sean Payton is kind of flexing on the entire NFL when it comes to coaching ability right now. So I think the Saints have a defensive advantage over Green Bay. I think they have a coaching advantage over Green Bay as well. Uh, I would definitely say the same thing for Seattle. Regardless of the improvement that the Seahawks defense has shown, um, they spent the vast majority of this year quite literally pacing to be the worst pass defense in NFL history. So I think the Saints have a key advantage there defensively. And again, even though I really respect Pete Carroll as a coach, he is not the guy manufacturing success as is Sean Payton with this New Orleans Saints offense. So that's another key separation point. And maybe that's why they're the favorite to win this NFC one seed. But when you look, it's a three-team race, Saints at 9-2, and two, Seahawks and Packers at 8-3. and three. Let's look at the remaining schedule for each team. Uh, Seattle has the Giants at home and the Jets at home. Wow. Wow, they called that the New York double team, a guaranteed double win. Congratulations. And I think Daniel Jones is going to miss time for the Giants yeah, as well. It looks like he's out. So uh, congratulations to Seattle. Oh, wait, never mind. Let's go ahead and make it a threesome. Uh, they follow up Giants at home, Jets at home, by going to Washington, D.C. to take on the football team. Uh, those are three games that they absolutely should win. So I'm going ahead and I'm counting Seattle at 11-3 and three right now. They're going to have a bit more of an interesting finish. Rams at home is a really tough game, especially when you consider that that could have a ton of division implications on the line. And they'll finish in San Francisco against the Niners, who looked like nothing against the Saints a couple weeks ago because of that defense, but then obviously came up with the big win and beat the Rams this past weekend. So Seattle, I look at a guaranteed three wins, two questionable games. The Packers are at home versus the Eagles. They go to Detroit to take on the Lions. And then they're at home versus the Panthers, home versus the Titans, and then they go to Chicago. So I think the Packers even looks a bit more favorable than does Seattle, right? The only team that you're worried about in that mix are the Tennessee Titans. And most importantly, that's an AFC team. So, like, I think it's pretty clear that barring, you know, the NFL, well, I should say this. I'm going to preface this. A lot of what we're talking about today is kind of the context. I want to lay out the context of where everybody is so you understand what you should or should not be cheering for. Uh, ultimately, something that we're talking about today is not going to go according to expectation, but you would expect that the Packers would win the remaining of these games. You would expect that the Packers are going to finish, uh, what would that put that, 10-2 and two in the NFC. I do not see them losing another NFC game. Maybe they lose that game to the Titans. Um, and then you look at the New Orleans Saints schedules, you're – at Atlanta, which is a little sketchy. You're at Eagles. That should be a guaranteed win. You're at home versus the Chiefs, which, like the Titans, it's a very tough matchup, way harder than the Titans, but at least it's an AFC team. And then you're at home versus the Vikings, who, unfortunately, they've been playing with a bit more juice lately. And then you finish in Carolina, which is a nice game. So all three of these contenders have relatively easy games left with a couple of pitfalls. I do like that the Saints' biggest test is that Kansas City game, though. Because let's just go say that you lose to Pat Mahomes and company, although maybe I shouldn't be assuming that, given that you are both legitimate Super Bowl contenders. But let's say that you lose that game. Well, that's fine. That would still put you on pace for a 13-3 and finish. And if you win the rest, you would be 11-1 and in the NFC. And if the Packers, let's say, they win out. Let's say they beat everybody left in their schedule. They would finish 13-3 and with a 10-2. and NFC record. If Seattle was to do the same and went out, they would finish 13-3 and with a 10-2 and NFC record, and that would be great for the Saints. 
Because if that's the case, if you have a three-way tie for the one seed, unless one of those teams has just beaten the other two head-to-head, the first tiebreaker is conference record. And so that's why the Saints losing to the Raiders as opposed to an NFC team early on may really come back to be huge for them and to pay huge dividends. Now, the disappointing scenario would be if you maybe have the Seahawks fall off because if you finish in a direct tie with the Packers, they do have that head-to-head over you from earlier this season. So things are heating up. This is exactly where you want to be. I think it's really a testament to this front office to the top-to-bottom nature of this roster, how impressive it is, how it's built. I mean, think about this. We're having this entire one-seat conversation. We're talking about expecting the Saints to maybe win out, and they don't even have Drew Brees right now. And it's not clear when he'll be back. Now, I do think he'll be back sooner rather than later. But, like, what a job. Just take a second and absorb that information because that really reinforces the job that Loomis in the front office has done and Jeff Ireland and building this roster and the job that Sean Payton is doing on a week-in and week-out basis. Like he said after the game on Sunday, they don't have to be pretty, okay? It's not about aesthetics. It is just about winning. And that's all this team has been about, especially this portion of the year. I was shocked to read earlier in a Jeff Duncan piece on The Athletic, the Saints are 27-3 and in the past three years in October and November. 27 and three. Now, you might say to yourself, okay, well, I, I want a little more of that to translate to December and January. And I think it will this year because of that defense. But it's going to start in Atlanta on Sunday. And, and if you thought that this Falcons game maybe didn't mean anything or if it was just for pride, you're like, ah, I'm okay with a 1 1 split. That's all well and good. But as we just laid out, with the NFC records, a 1 1 split with Atlanta could potentially end up costing you that one seed. And trust me when I say, There is nothing that Atlanta Falcons fans and players would love more than to directly negatively affect your season in that way, to take away a first-round buy, to take away whatever home field advantage is in the 2020 playoffs. And so Taysom Hill was not very good. You just heard Nick Underhill break it down. Uh, So I I was kind of of the opinion yesterday that so much of that was by design pregame. Nick Underhill thinks that maybe – It was even after the game started a little bit, and they just adjusted more conservatively because Hill just was not seeing the field, was not throwing the ball well. He's going to have to be better against Atlanta this Sunday. I, as good as the Saints' defense has been playing, I still think it's it's just a bit of it. You you it's hard to say that they're going to dominate that O line in the same way that they did last time when you squared up with Atlanta, just because it was pure and utter. It was a bit of a mathematical outlier. So we'll see. But, but the, the point here is twofold. First off, you're right where you want to be. You control your own destiny if you just straight up win out. It's the best thing. You are the one seed. You have great advantages in a three-way tie scenario because of your NFC record. And so this is a very exciting time for Saints fans. And the second part of all of this is to tell you who to watch out for in the Seahawks and the Packers and then to reinforce just how important Sunday's game is against the Atlanta Falcons. you got to have. You got to have it if you want to win that N- that NFC one seed. All right, when we get back on OTBOT, let's look at the NFL as a whole as we uh, do our NFL roundup, and we will close the week, close the book on the NFL week that was. OTBOT. Hey, I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, go ahead and like and subscribe below. You want more great Saints content? We got it all here on Off the Bench Overtime. Check out these other videos, share with your friends, and let's grow the Houdat Nation together. Houdat!